Now when we get to March, the vegetable sowing season is starting to get a bit of momentum. We were able to plant one or two seeds in January and February, but when we get to March, the amount of vegetables that we can sow increases because we're getting closer to our last frost date and that gives more ability to sow new vegetable seeds and in this video I'll be sharing 20 suggestions of vegetables that I'll be sowing myself in March just to give you one or two ideas. If you do like this video don't forget to give it the thumbs up and if you want to subscribe to the channel for future videos on how to sow and grow fruit and veg and one or two recipe ideas don't forget to press the subscribe button. Now let's start with peppers because some varieties of peppers are still okay to sow in March. I've already sowed my hot peppers, my Carolina Reapers and Button Jalokia. They're already sown in February, so they're, they're all sorted. But there are a couple of varieties I'll also be sowing in March. The first one is a cayenne pepper, a hot cayenne, and the other one is a jalapeno pepper. Now these will be sown in early March. I'll put them inside in pots in my propagator because peppers need temperatures of 20 to 25 degrees centigrade to germinate and that's not air temperature that is soil temperature so these need to go in a propagator to start and they'll need to be kept warm until they're ready to plant out so two varieties of peppers that I'll be planting will be jalapeno and cayenne now throughout the video I'm going to be suggesting a number of vegetables that you can plant straight outside Temperature is a little bit warmer than the harsher January, February months. But of course, that's going to depend upon what the conditions are in your part of the world. If you've still got frosts or you've got waterlogged ground, then clearly it may be better to wait or to start your vegetables indoors. But something I'm definitely going to be planting in March is going to be peas. These are a fantastic variety called Calverdon Wonder. Uh, I'm going to look at my ground conditions because I may plant a row of these outside. Uh, but if not, I'll start them in my gutter, as you would have seen from a video I did last year, uh, and then put them in the poly house, and when the temperature is better, I will take them outside. You want to be sowing these at about five centimetres in depth, and if you're going to do rows, they need to be about six inches uh, apart. Now, if you've looked at the last two monthly videos I've done on sowing seeds in January and February, you'll notice that I've mentioned broad beans, and you'll know that I love broad beans. So just over my shoulder, just here, you can see the broad beans that I sowed in November. They're a variety called Valenciana. And it's good to sow broad beans also in March if you choose to do so. They can be sown in February as well. And if you want, say, successive crops and you do like broad beans, there's no reason why they can't go straight in the ground in March. Another popular variety I always recommend is Bunyard exhibition in addition to Valenciana which actually I'm growing those for the first time this year so I'll let you know how I get on with them. So planting broad beans is really easy all you need to do is make a hole with your index finger and then put the seed at the depth of where your knuckle is and then fill it with multi-purpose compost. I think in previous videos I recommend spacings of 12 inches you can make them 9 inches if you want to but they do need a little bit of space because they can grow quite tall and quite big. Tomatoes are something else that you can sow in March and I'm aware that a lot of growers, particularly in the UK, start their tomatoes in February. For me that's just a little bit early uh, based upon my growing conditions and the space I have available. So I tend to start mine in early March. This year I'm going to grow two varieties. The first one is an outdoor bush variety called Marmonade and the second one is one that I'm sure most of you will be aware of. It's called Moneymaker. Moneymaker is one of those uh, varieties that is uh, regularly uh, grown and very very popular in the UK. So these particular seeds I will put them inside, so they'll be started off inside. They're sown at a very shallow depth, in fact almost on the surface, with a very thin coating of compost, probably no more than one centimetre, uh, and I'll put them inside my propagator and in order to germinate they'll need temperatures of around about 15 to 20 degrees and I'll keep them in the propagator until they germinate and then I'll monitor the temperature after I've transplanted them and then eventually bring them into my unheated polyhouse in order to carry on growing. Now those of you who are regular to my channel will know that I love beetroot. Uh, in previous years I've grown a variety called Renova which are the almost like carrot shape type of beetroot and they've been quite good over the last few years. But I'm going to shake things up a little bit this year and I'm going to try two brand new varieties of beetroot. The first one is one called Moneta, and the second one is called Pablo F1. 
Now these will be sown directly outside, so as I said previously, I'm going to need to monitor the ground condition just to make sure it's correct. I'm not a big fan of planting beetroot uh, inside and then transplanting them because in my experience, beetroots don't transplant that well. They'll be sown to a depth of about one inch, which is about 2.5 centimetres, and spaced uh, probably round about six inches apart. So as I've said, once you plant beetroot directly into the ground, it's much better than transplanting. I have tried to transplant beetroot before and it has worked, but I have lost quite a few. So now I tend to wait for the right ground conditions and put them straight in the ground. If that's in March, that's when I'll plant them. So two varieties, Moneta and Pablo F1. Now one of my absolute favorite vegetables is sweet corn and that's something also that could be sown in March. Between March and May, it's always recommended that they're sown indoors. So these will be sown in individual plant cells to a depth of 1.5 centimeters. And I'm probably gonna start mine off in the propagator just to lay germinate, because they do like a little bit of heat. And then I'll bring them to my polyhouse. Two varieties that I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna grow my usual favorite, which is Incredible F1. And if you wanna see how they look, go and look at previous videos on the channel. Fantastic sweet corn. And a brand new one, which I've never grown before, is a variety called Rising Sun F1. Looks like a really fantastic sweet corn, but as I say, I'll let you know how I get on with that. Another reason why you would sow sweet corn indoors as well, in some parts of the country, in some parts of the world, they have a problem with mice, and mice will dig into the ground and actually eat the seeds. So it makes sense that you sow them indoors first. Now, two of the vegetables that I'll be sowing in March are cauliflowers, a variety called All the Year Round, and Brussels sprouts, a variety called Brendan F1. Now, if you look at these seed packets, it says that you can sow them outdoors in March, March to May. I'm probably not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is put them into individual cells inside and start them inside my polyhouse. They won't need any heat or propagation uh, like some of the other crops might need because they will germinate in cooler temperatures. They might be a little bit slower. Uh, when they get to a certain size, I will then harden them off and when the conditions are a little bit warmer outside, I'll put them directly outside. And these will need some form of protection in terms of netting because uh, obviously the insects will attack them. Now the real success story for me last year was my celery. If you look at per previous videos from last year, you'll know that I did really well growing a variety called Octavius F1. And March is the time to now plant them. They do germinate very slowly and as I mentioned on a previous video, I thought I'd lost mine because they were so slow to germinate. They do like temperatures of about 15 degrees centigrade, but remember that's soil temperature, not air temperature. So they don't need propagation, but they do like a slightly warmer environment and that'll help with the germination. So celery is definitely something that I'll be planting in March and look forward to growing that again, it was fantastic. Linked to that and really exciting for the very first time, I'll also be growing celeriac. Uh, this is a variety called Iona F1. Never grown it before, uh, but it's something that I've always wanted to grow. In terms of planting the seeds, very similar to what I've just mentioned for celery. So they'll be planted indoors in March, trying to keep them to temperatures of 15 degrees C. And from what I've heard from other people, just like I mentioned for the celery, other people tell me that they're very slow to germinate, so I need to be a little bit patient with them. But definitely take a look at future videos because I want to sort of monitor how I get on with the celeriac. Now another veg and variety that I've grown for years is cucumber and a variety called Market Moor 76. In fact, I never grow any other types of cucumber. These are fantastic. They're an outdoor ridge cucumber and they crop really, really heavily. These can be sown in March as well. I'll be sowing these indoors. They do like a good temperature, so maybe around about 20 degrees. So I'm gonna pop them in the propagator until they germinate and then I'll harden them off in my polyhouse once they're ready. So we'll sow them to a depth of about 1.5 centimetres in a good seed potting mix and put them in the propagator. So this variety of cucumbers, Marking More 76, is a fantastic variety of cucumbers to sow in March. If you've not tried Marking More 76, then definitely give them a go. Now parsnips are another good vegetable to sow in March. Now I mentioned this in the February video as well because you can sow them in February. However, in that video, and I'll mention this again, it's all about the preparation. The ground has to be right. Now parsnips are a root vegetable, so they're gonna need ground that allows them to grow. So as they grow downward, they don't really wanna be interrupted with too many stones. So really the ground needs to be prepared really well. So you want good fertile free draining soil uh, in order to prepare your ground ready to receive your parsnips. Now I'm going to be growing two varieties this year. One is called Sabre 
F1 and the other is called Hollow Crown. So when you've prepared the ground, you need to be sewing them to a depth of about 1.5 centimetres, so they're not very deep. And over time, just keep an eye on weeds. They are quite slow germinators, parsnips, but they're not good transplanters. So my recommendation is to plant them directly outside as long as you prepare the ground properly. Herbs are also some things that you could think about starting in March. So I plan to start mine in pots. Um, so I'll be sowing for the first time dill. There's no variety on that, it's just called dill. Basil, which is a mixed variety of basil called basket of basils. And parsley, which is called plain leaved too. Now for the dill and the basil, you only want to sow the seeds almost on the surface with a very fine coating of compost, or you could use vermiculite instead. The parsley goes a little bit deeper, about 1.5 centimetres. And what I'll do is I'll put those in pots and then probably put them on the windowsill in my potting shed to allow them to germinate. So March is a good time to start consider sowing your herbs. So you may also consider starting carrots outside in March. So I'll be sowing my usual variety of Autumn King 2. Uh, and these will go outside in well prepared ground to a depth of 1.5 centimetres. So when I placed my last online seed order, I mustn't have looked very closely because they have provided me with my Autumn King 2 carrots, but Instead of being loose seeds, they're on seed tape. So when I plant them, I'll let you know how I get on with them because I've never used seed tape before. So carrots are another variety of vegetables that you can start in March if the weather conditions are okay. But there's a good window for sowing carrots anyway. So even if the weather's not quite right in March, you can sow these right from March through to July. Now I've already started sowing my salad veg from February, so I already have a small sowing of lettuce and spring onions. But for a regular supply of these type of vegetables, you want to be sowing them regularly, say every three weeks, but in small amounts, so that you get a continuous supply throughout the year. So I'll be growing four varieties of lettuce this year. I'll be growing Lola Rossa, which can be sown in March. Uh, you can still sow winter density, a fantastic variety of winter lettuce. Uh, they can be sown up till April. I'll be sowing all the year round lettuce. And one of my real big favourites I grew last year is a variety called Lakeland. Uh, fantastic lettuce, really fresh and crunchy, and I've got some more seeds this year uh, to put in. So they're great to put in in March. I will put them inside. I'll put them inside my polyhouse. They don't need any heat. So it's always best to sow them in small numbers, but regularly. Otherwise, if you put too many in, you end up with a glut of lettuce that you're probably not going to be able to use. So just by, by sowing a few at a time, that allows you to have a continuous supply. So now, just like I've mentioned for the lettuce, I also like a regular supply of spring onions, and that's something I will, just like the lettuce, sow regularly every three weeks. But I'll be growing four varieties this year. Two I've grown before, a variety called White Lisbon, which I know most of you are going to be aware of. And a fantastic variety I grew last year for the first time is a variety called Ramrod. They're produced by Mr. Fothergills. But there are two other new varieties that I'll be growing this year for the first time. One called Ishikura, and the other is called Elodi. And as mentioned, with the spring onions, I do like a regular supply of those. So I've already got some that were sown in February, uh, but I tend, just like the lettuce, to grow them in small amounts, but regularly, rather than grow lots that you'll struggle to use. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that the big success story for me last year was definitely the celery, but not that far behind in terms of success for last year, which I grew for the first time, was kale. This is a variety called Dwarf Green Curled, and it's one that I'm going to be sowing again this year, and March is a great time to sow it. So you can sow it in March or April, and I'm going to be sowing it indoors first, in seed trays. Seeds will go to a depth of about 1.5 centimetres, and then once they're large enough, I'll be pricking them out, putting them into individual cells, uh, and leaving them in the polyhouse until they're ready to be hardened off and eventually planted outside. Another vegetable I really like is butternut squash, and that's something I'll also sow in March. The variety I grew last year was a variety called Hawk, F1. And that produced some really good butternut squash. Uh, I'll plant these inside. They like temperatures of 15 to 20 degrees, so I treat them very similar to cucumbers. I'll put them inside my propagator until they germinate and then take them out and bring them into my polyhouse to let them grow on. 
The seeds will be sown to a depth of about 1.5 centimetres and covered with a little bit of compost and then as I said I put them in the propagator and then grow them on from there. Now a vegetable I've always found to do very well on this allotment is turnips and I'll be looking to sow my turnip seeds directly outside in March. I favour a variety called Purple Top Milan and you would have seen that variety if you've looked at previous videos. Again, if they're going to go outside in March, I will make sure the ground is prepared properly, it's not waterlogged, and it's the right conditions to sow these particular seeds. If I feel that, based upon the weather, it's not quite ready, I might wait until April. The seeds will be sown to a depth of about 1 to 1.5 centimetres and just lightly covered, and then I'll water them in and let them grow on from there. And finally, just like the lettuce and the spring onions I talked about earlier, something I like a regular supply of is radish. I'll be growing this variety French breakfast for the first time. In fact, I've already sown uh, a small number of these in February. And just like the lettuce and the spring onions, I will sow them at regular intervals in small amounts. So these will be sown to a depth of 1.5 centimetres and these will be sown directly outdoors. So as I'm sowing them for the first time this year, I'll let you know in future videos how I get on. Now for these seed sowing videos, it's always worth mentioning that you may need to adjust your sowing times depending upon your climate. I'm in zone 8A in the middle of the UK and all of the sowing suggestions that I've given in the video are based upon this zone. So if you do live in a different hardiness zone, then you might need to adjust your sowing dates depending upon your particular local conditions. So I really hope that's give you some ideas about what you can sow in March. Everything I've shown in this video are things that I'm actually sowing myself. I'm sure there are loads of other vegetables and loads of other varieties that can be sown in March that you might be thinking about. And it'd be great if you could share that with other viewers of the channel just by popping a comment below. It'd be great to see what you're growing, what varieties, to give others ideas. I do hope you've liked the video and you found it useful. And if you did, don't forget to give it the thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel for future videos on how to sow and grow fruit and veg and one or two recipe ideas, then don't forget to press the subscribe button. And I'll see you all on the next video.